My concerns with the, the fall of the dollar. What is Ron Paul's plan for the economy? How do we bring back the dollar so I can go to Europe and buy stuff? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question because there are two points I want to make regarding this. The reason Ron Paul became a congressman is because of President Nixon's 1971 decision of closing the gold window, which he learned at that time was going to be a disaster for the dollar. And since then, the dollar has lost 80% of its purchasing power. So you want to know why you're paying high prices today? You can thank Richard Nixon when he basically declared the United States government bankrupt because under the post-World War II agreement called Bretton Woods that was done in New Hampshire, the U.S. government was supposed to redeem dollars, uh, $35 for one ounce of gold. Because of the policies of the 1950s and 60s and in the Vietnam War, the gold went overseas because we spent so much overseas with the Vietnam War. By 1971, the federal government was bankrupt. So Ron Paul got into the politics because of the money issue. And he's been battling the Federal Reserve ever since 1976 because the, one of the hallmarks of a sound nation, sound economy, is to have a sound currency where it's not falling in value against other currencies and it's not losing its purchasing power domestically. So if you want to know why you have high medical costs, high tuition costs, high property taxes, high auto insurance costs, high uh, <laughs> energy costs, it's because of the depreciation of the currency. This has been going on for 2,000 years. This is nothing new. The kings and old debased the currency by putting in base metals. And uh, with this modern technology called the printing press, now it's called digital money, we have an institution with a monopoly of printing money called the Federal Reserve. And he's the only candidate on both sides of the aisle has brought up the issue. And I will argue from now to my last breath that that's the reason he's been silenced by the mainstream media. Because we're talking about trillions of dollars at stake that the financial and political elite need to keep this big government running, the cheap money that the Federal Reserve creates. And Ron Paul is the only one that's blown the whistle on this scam that's been in effect for 100 years now since 1913. And that's the reason Ron Paul has been blacked out by the mainstream media. You can talk about all the other things, all the other issues, but that's the primary issue. Because if you don't have control of the money by the government, prices will come down and we will have a much better economy, we'll have sustainable growth, we won't have the Federal Reserve manipulating interest rates and causing these bubbles that end in terrible busts for people who don't know what they're signing with the subprime loans. If you really know what, what's hurting the American people, it has to do with that temple in Washington called the Federal Reserve Building. And if anything that comes out of this campaign is that the American people will be educated about how their money is being destroyed, diluted by the Federal Reserve. And that's the great legacy of Ron Paul's campaign for president. He's blown the whistle on them, and the media are blocking them out. And you should understand this, this silence about his message because it threatens the very political elite of this country and the financial elite of this country. It's about us versus them. They have controlled the printing press. They can manipulate the interest rate. They can generate these booms with ends, which ends in terrible bust and high unemployment. I've been around long enough. I saw the recession of 69-70, the 73-74, the 79-80-81-82 recession and then the 90-91 recession, and now we're at another one. It's all because of the manipulation of money and credit by the Federal Reserve, an area of my expertise since I wrote a dissertation at Rutgers about this. So if there's anybody who understands what's going on in Washington, Ron Paul interrogates Ben Bernanke in the House Financial Services Committee. Ben Bernanke is silent when he's asked a direct question by Congressman Paul on why are you debasing the currency. Ben Bernanke is silent. You can go on YouTube and watch the video. The, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is unwilling to answer a very simple question. Why do you continually debase the currency? That's what's at stake in this election, and no other candidate has the courage, the knowledge, and the understanding of what's going on but Ron Paul. Did I answer your question? I have a question. Yes. I mean, I, I you know, personally, I thought that was a really good answer, and I'm really impressed. I want to know what he would do, though. Very simple. You tell the Federal Reserve, you either stop printing money or we, we I don't know if you have, you have the power in the executive order to, because it's a creation of Congress, but you pass a law 
telling the Federal Reserve to stop printing money. And he wants to go back to, remember, Article 1, Section 8 says only gold and silver should be legal tender in the United States. That's still in the Constitution. That hasn't been repealed. But through a series of maneuvers, 1913 was a watershed year in American history. Because that's the year we got the 16th Amendment giving us the income tax, which the proponents promised would only be paid by 2% of the population. And the top rate was 7%. Now, how many of you would like to be exempt from the income tax and only 2% of the people pay with a top rate of 7%? That's what the 16th Amendment was all about. It was another bait and switch by the federal government. And then in December 1913, President Wilson, former governor of New Jersey, signed the Federal Reserve Act, giving us the Federal Reserve, which basically cartelized the banking system and gave the banking system and the Federal Reserve tremendous power over the economy. And since then, the dollar has lost more than 95% of its value. The one way of looking at inflation is very simple. Postage stamp, when I was growing up in the 1950s, was 3 cents. Now it's 41 cents. So it's up 14 times the price. The delivery of the Postal Service hasn't changed any much from 1955. But what has changed is the value of the dollar. It's gone down. So it takes more dollars to buy something. Why are housing prices a half a million dollars in Burke County when there were 30,000 30 years ago? the depreciation of the dollar. So all these things affect us in a very real way, and Congressman Paul is the only one that's been talking about it. Why? I want to know why. Either the other can candidates do not know about this, which means they're unqualified to be president, or they have been told not to talk about it. That there are, there are only two possibilities. You either don't know about it, or you've been told not to talk about it. That's the only reason you have for the other candidates. None of the other candidates in all the debates have mentioned the word Federal Reserve out of their lips. Why? When it's the most powerful institution in the world, more powerful than the president, more powerful than, uh, than uh, uh, the, that lunatic from Iran that we're so worried about. The Federal Reserve destroys money. You know what that means? It means our standard of living will have to go down. That's what it means. 